Hi there. I'm Matt Major, Partner Solutions Engineer for Google Maps Platform, and I'm here today with Mike Pegg, who leads our developer advocacy. Hi, Mike. Hi there, Matt. Today, we're going to share with you ways that you can make the most of your Google Maps Platform implementation in 2024. We'll also give you some best practices around making sure you're up to date on the latest versions and additions to Google Maps Platform products. As many of you know, we launched new versions of some of our core APIs and capabilities, released new ways to help you build on web and iOS, and rolled out a new level of support. Looking ahead this year, we also have plans to improve the usefulness and organization of our developer documentation to make it easier for you to get started, build, and grow with us. Today, we'll talk you through some of each of these areas and share with you what you need to know as 2024 gets started. Okay, let's get right into it here, starting with some new web and iOS updates for our developers. To support modern web development, at the end of 2023, we launched the VizGL React Google Maps Library. Now, this is the first Google-sponsored library for integrating Maps JavaScript API components into a React web app. This was really important to us since React.js is currently the most popular front-end web framework and in use by over half of front-end web developers. The library is available on NPM as VizGL React Google Maps, and you can install it just like any package from NPM. We have a full set of videos on our YouTube channel that will help you along the way. And now for our iOS developers, we have some great news. A long-awaited launch of Swift Package Manager support for our Maps, Places, and Navigation SDKs for iOS. With Xcode's integration of Swift Package Manager as the primary way to add packages to iOS projects, this provides easier maintenance of dependencies when using Google Maps Platform SDKs for iOS. The ability to install and maintain Maps Platform SDK dependencies through Swift Package Manager is one of the most common feature requests we hear from our developers. With direct integration in the Xcode IDE, you can add package dependencies to your iOS projects simply by adding the URL for the corresponding SDK's GitHub repository. Swift Package Manager in Xcode also allows you to specify package versions which match the versions of the corresponding SDKs. We have detailed instructions and URLs for adding Swift packages in the documentation for maps, places, and navigation SDKs for iOS. And for existing projects that are migrating from another dependency manager to Swift Package Manager, our documentation also provides instructions for deleting the binaries that were installed through other package managers. Now let's talk about some improvements we've made to some of our most used products and capabilities, routes, places, and cloud-based map styling. Thanks, Mike. Last May, we announced the general availability of our new Routes API, an enhanced version of the Directions and Distance Matrix APIs that combines both of these into a single service. Routes API enables you to provide more informative and flexible routes for your users. Why migrate to the new Routes API? Well, in addition to new features such as two-wheeled vehicle routing and improved ETA accuracy, the Routes API provides improved performance for calculating directions, distance, and travel time. This makes it worthwhile to implement the new Routes API into apps that currently use distance matrix or directions APIs. Most of the functionality of Routes API is also backwards compatible with both the directions and distance matrix APIs. Key improvements include higher request limits, faster request response to reduce latency, and the ability to specify which fields to return, reducing processing time and billing charges. We have a detailed migration guide available that will allow you to easily identify updates you need to make to transition from distance matrix and directions APIs over to the new routes API. We want to make this as easy as possible for you. Next, our new Places API gives you the opportunity to share new place type information from Google Maps with your users. We added new features in text search, place details, photos, and nearby search, which now includes EV charging. We also simplified the pricing for new Places API. With field masking now available for place details, text search, and nearby search, you can control the costs by requesting only the information for your apps that you need. For example, 
If you only request fields included in the basic data tier in your nearby search, only the nearby search basic SKU will be built. If you request reviews or place data like whether a restaurant serves dessert, the nearby search preferred SKU will be built. What's important to note here is that your current places API implementations will not automatically update to include these new features and pricing. So in order to take advantage of the new features and pricing, you will need to migrate to the new places API. Our migration guide provides all the information you need to get started and also will help you understand the key differences in the new places API compared to the previous version, along with how to make and handle the necessary changes. As part of the new places API, we've also updated autocomplete. We've changed the pricing to make it simpler, more intuitive, and a better match to how your users leverage autocomplete. With the new autocomplete session-based pricing, if your user doesn't complete their session, for example, if they enter a single character in the search box and then close their browser, you'll only be charged for an autocomplete request instead of a full session with address validation or place details. While this new version of autocomplete is in preview, you can try it out at no cost to you. Over to you, Mike, for some updates on map styling. Thanks, Matt. So in December, we made the next generation of our cloud-based map styling generally available, providing you with over 100 stylable map elements that help you style and customize the base map and activate new features like POI density. If you have map styles created in an earlier version of cloud-based map styling, you can update them to the new styling. The new map styling has more map features and performance improvements. We created a guide to help you migrate your projects, but here are a few tips to help you get started. First, you don't have to update earlier styles to the latest release. Your existing styles will just work. However, if you want to use the improvements in the latest release, you have to update to recreate your legacy styles. Oh, and just a quick heads up, importing a JSON map style is not supported in the latest cloud styling. But a workaround is to import the JSON style into the legacy style editor and then update it. Now let's talk about a couple more ways we're offering more support to our developers and customers. In an effort to provide a best-in-class support experience, we launched enhanced support for Google Maps Platform last year. For customers with business-critical mapping workloads, enhanced support includes weekend coverage, escalations, communication with highly trained Google support engineers, and support for complex data issues. Enhanced support provides your development teams with the responsive support they need to avoid impactful issues. So with this enhanced support, your team receives 24 by seven coverage, 365 days a year, including holidays, with a meaningful response within one hour. Highly trained support engineers will respond to cases and communicate with you. Support engineers that monitor your quota consumption and increase your limits as needed uh, to avoid critical incidents was also included. And with enhanced support, customers can escalate cases and receive high level engineering support as well. This service is especially useful for teams who need direct communication with Google support engineers via voice or video using Google Meet or need individualized support for even the most complex requests. We're always here to help. Next, let's cover how we're thinking about improving our developer documentation and other resources. I wanna first talk about the two most important considerations guiding our planning for our documentation this year. First, is the content good and useful? I mean, is it the right content and is it created from a place of developer empathy? Are we focusing on improving content developers say they want most like sample code, tutorials and how-to videos? And second, is all of it easy to find? Google Maps Platform offers a lot of features across many different APIs and SDKs. If we want you to use our products to build what you want and even tempt your imaginations with new ideas, it's important to know what the platform as a whole gives you, not just which single API you need to build X, but also which APIs you need to build X and Y and Z in combination. We're doubling down on the basics of solid, useful content that's easier to find. We're focusing that attention on different surfaces from navigating throughout the docs to landing pages to API and language pickers, and maybe even some kind of sensible AI, all the way down to just making our existing content better 
and creating new artifacts that just hit the sweet spot. Now, over to you, Matt, to wrap things up. Thanks, Mike. Finally, we want to encourage you to check out our Architecture Center. Our developer documentation is great to help you build with the APIs and SDKs on the platform. And Architecture Center complements those by giving you industry-specific solutions that you can build with those raw tools. We update and add new docs regularly, so we hope they will inspire you and your teams to continue building for everyone with Google Maps Platform. Thank you for joining us today.